Welcome, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to my brand new YouTube channel. I am Evil Phil, purveyor of darkness and bringer of death to countless digital lives. I am the sort of person who, when presented with the chance to do villainy, leaps in headfirst and never looks back. I have changed the destiny of entire galaxies by embracing the dark side. Conquered ancient gods as master of the way of the closed fist, and run roughshod over entire alien armadas as an unstoppable renegade. And today, my campaign of horror and destruction will be directed at the unfortunate residents of Los Angeles in one of my favorite RPGs, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodline. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Vampire the Masquerade setting, it revolves around the idea that vampires, along with plenty of other nasty creatures, are real and living among us. However, this is a strongly guarded secret, protected by a code of rules and laws known as the Masquerade. Essentially, vampires and other supernatural creatures do their best to stay hidden and keep their power plays out of sight of humanity. Even though a single person is no match for a vampire or a werewolf, humanity has a pretty big numbers advantage on their side over the monsters. Also flamethrowers. Uh, I've played this game several times already, however there is one particular clan that I've always avoided playing, that being the Nosferatu. Now, the Nosferatu are somewhat unique in the respect that they are so obviously deformed and vampire-y that merely being seen by normal people who aren't in on the whole vampire society thing is a violation of the Masquerade's rules. And that means they have a pretty heavy focus on stealth because you literally have no choice. Violating the Masquerade too many times is an automatic game over, so as a Nosferatu you have to do a lot of skulking around and be a whole lot more careful. Now, there's a couple reasons I've avoided playing these guys, despite being horrible monsters. And the first is the game thing... The game's actual gameplay is uh, well, janky. I've had a whole lot of technical, or it had a whole lot of technical issues when it first came out, and even without bugs running thanks to the community patches, it's still not the best at combat and stealth. Most of the entertainment from this game comes from the story, and that means interacting with the people in the game. So if you're in a situation where you can't run around interacting with as many NPCs, I've always worried that might harm the experience. The other reason is that stealth gameplay is just kind of boring to me. Now, don't get me wrong, I can appreciate a good stealth game from time to time, but I'm more of an action-oriented gamer. I want to get in there and mix it up. Guns blazing, explosions going off behind me as my cape flutters in the wind. But I figured that since I enjoyed this game a whole bunch already, I ought to give it a chance to prove that it can do Nosferatu Riot too. And while I'm doing that, I might as well record it and see if anyone else finds it fun to watch. So without further delay, let's set up our character, shall we? make a custom character go pick Nosferatu here you can see this guy's pretty fuggly got all sorts of nasty teeth going on there oh one other thing I forgot to mention I'm also running other than the community patch a mod called comic FX which changes the way that the game looks somewhat drastically it gives it more of a that kind of gruff pen and ink comic booky feel to it never actually used it before so I'm not sure how good it's gonna look if it ends up being completely horrible then I'll go back and change it later we're going to give it a shot. Alright, so you can see we're Nosferatu here. We're going to be a male. Uh, we're going to call ourselves Phil. And this is our history where we can get some modifications to the way that our character plays. Sort of like, for example, video game publisher. You relish the sad and a sad pleasure in ruining promising game development studios with impossible deadlines. Swap the priority order of your attributes to mental, social, and physical. Now what priority order means, whenever you create a new character, you have, uh, you'll get a certain amount of points that you're allowed to assign, and like, the first priority of your stats will get two points, second will get one point, and the third will get no points. <clears throat> so, what we're going to do, however, is we're going to play a Leatherface. Your rebirth as a hideous beast was a dream come true. The power is intoxicating, and now you're going to make them pay. All of them. You start with one point in melee and an extra point in potence. You never felt much empathy for loving things, however, and now it will cost you more experience to buy humanity points, and you are more likely to frenzy. So basically, 
which is going to be a horrible monster that's going to go around murdering everything, and this is, will help us do that. So, and this is the character screen. This is pretty close to what the pen and paper game is, from what I remember. I never actually got into vampire uh, pen and paper stuff. I was more of a Dungeons and Dragons player. But from what I remember of looking at the sheets, this is pretty close to it. Now, as you can see here, we have our attributes are mental, physical, and social. So we have two points in mental and one point in physical to spend here. And the, these are your stats, basically. And their stats will influence your feats, which are what is actually gets, what actually gets checked anytime you do some sort of a roll. So we're going to put two points in perception because that will give us an inspection uh, rating of three, which we'll raise up another way. But inspection allows us to see hidden objects in the world, and inspection. Finding hidden objects, uh, we can find hidden keys that way, and that'll help us get into places without having to rely on asking people for information, or you know, potentially having to sneak around in, in the opening and potentially get caught. And over here, we're going to put a point in dexterity because that's going to help us with lock picking and sneaking, which will also help us more in getting around without being seen, and that's going to be really important early on. And over here, we're going to go with intimidation, and because obviously we're a big horrible monster and we want people to be scared of us so the few times that we do have to talk with people having the ability to you know bully them into doing what we want that's always nice you can see I have this blue dot means that I have a free point in melee from being a leather face I have three points to assign here now you might think it's best to just dump a whole bunch of points into one thing since the cost for raising it goes up every time you get it and putting free points in there will make the cost less later but there are skill books you can find in the game that will raise your stats for a little bit of money basically so you actually kind of want to spread things out and firearms is not a bad thing to have even if you're going to be a melee focused character because some of the guns are really nice and being able to shoot things from a distance without having to put yourself in danger is always helpful so we're going to put one point in each of these Security will make it so we can lockpick better. Stealth will make it so we can sneak better. <clears throat> and of course, we are free point in melee. It will make it so that we use melee weapons more effectively. Now over here in knowledge is we're going to go with one point in computer, which will help us hack better, which will further help us get around without having to uh, rely on asking people things. And then we're going to put another point in scholarship. And research is what's necessary. you got to have a certain level of research to read the skill books you find. So research is also pretty important. Now down here are the disciplines. Now the disciplines are the vampiric powers that each clan gets. And they're different for each clan, though some of them have some overlap. But Nosferatu here have animalism, which is kind of uh, weird vampire nature powers, like they can summon you know, birds and bugs and wolves and stuff. Obfuscate, which is vampiric invisibility, that's going to be really important for us. And potence, which allows us to hit things really hard. Now we get a free point in potence here for being a leather face, but we're going to put our extra point in obfuscate because level two obfuscate <clears throat> will allow us to move around while crouching without becoming visible, which level one can't do. So this build is going to be required for us to move around without getting seen very, <clears throat> very easily. So that's what we're going to go with here. All right, so now we're going to get right into the introduction. Really good. Oh, there we are. That's us. Handsome looking fellow. We had a real party in here. And now we're a horrible monster with free eye piercings, apparently. That's a bit weird. She doesn't look very Nosferatu. -y. Good evening, my fellow kindred. My apologies for disrupting any business or interfering with prior engagements you may have had this evening. It's unfortunate that the affair that gathers us together tonight is a troubling one. We are here because the laws that bind our society, the laws that are the fabric of our existence, have been broken. As prince, I am within my rights to grant or deny the kindred of this city the privilege of siring. 
Many of you have come to me seeking permission, and I have endorsed some of these requests. However, the accused that sits before you tonight was not refused permission. Indeed, my permission was never sought at all. They were caught shortly after the embrace of this child. It pains me to announce the sentence, ah. as up to tonight I considered the accused a loyal and upstanding member of our organization. Got some kind of glamour going on But there. as some of you may know, the penalty for this transgression is death. Know that I am no more adjudicator than I am a servant to the law that governs us all. Let tonight's proceedings serve as a reminder to our community that we must adhere to the code that binds our society, lest we endanger all of our blood. Forgive me. Let the penalty commence. This doesn't look too bad so far. Which leads to the fate of the ill-begotten progeny. Without a sire, most child are doomed to walk the earth never knowing their place, their responsibility, and most importantly, the laws they must obey. Therefore, I have decided that this is bullshit! If Mr. Rodriguez would let me finish, I have decided to let this kindred live. They shall be instructed in the ways of our kind and be granted the same rights. Let no one say I am unsympathetic to the plights and causes of this community. I thank you all for attending these proceedings, and I hope their significance is not lost. Good evening. Blood looked particularly cool there for when she got her head chopped off. Ooh, that skin doesn't look terribly great, though. wonder if it's only because it's really dark. Your sire. Tragic. My apologies. But you see, there is a strict code of conduct that all of us must... must... adhere to if we wish to survive. When someone anyone breaks these laws, they undermine the well-worn fabric of our centuries-old society. <laughs> that vampire swagger. Understand my predicament. Allowing you to live makes me directly responsible for your subsequent behavior. So, what I'm offering is not generosity, but the opportunity to transcend the fate woven by your sire. This is your trial. You will be brought to Santa Monica, there, you will meet an agent by the name of Mercurio. He will provide the details of your labor. I've shown you great clemency. Prove it was more than a wasted gesture, fledgling. Don't come back until you do. Good evening. Seems reasonable. All right, got our tutorial movement here. And... Oh. <laughs> What a scene, man! Hooey! <laughs> then they just plop you out here like a naked baby in the woods. <laughs> How about that? Ah, look, you know, it's probably a lot for you to take in, so, uh, why don't you let me show you the ropes? What do you say? Hmm. Uh, who exactly are you? I'm Jack. What's important is I'm offering help. You make it back from Santa Monica with your hide, and we'll trade life stories, okay? Until then, I got about this much time. You in or out? Uh, sure. I could use the help. All right. Uh, why don't we, uh, step out back Whoa, here? Oh, that's, uh, not what I was looking for. Uh, I like it where I am. At least I'm out of that theater. Christ, it's stuffy in there, huh? This is much better. Now, we ain't got much time, but I figure somebody should fill you in on the bare bones stuff, at least. You know, could save your hide. You look wobbly. You even had a drink yet? A uh, drink of what? Oh, man, we're popping a cherry here. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, you're going to love this. All right, check it out. Blood, it's your new rack of lamb, your new champagne. Blood, your new fucking heroin, kid. <laughs> Get ready, though, because, hey, it's never as sweet as the first time. Uh, so what do I do? 
Well, down around the corner there, I saw this human. Or else OP can't find his car. <laughs> How unfortunate. But, uh, need a little more details than that, Jack. Right. You go down there, catch him. You creep up on him. You bear those little fangs and feed. Don't Don't worry, have, have you seen my fangs, Jack? Because it'll come so naturally. You think you've done it a thousand times already. I have a mouth like a bear trap, Jack. Uh, won't he become a vampire then? <laughs> Forget that comic book crap, kid. It don't work that way. Now go for it. Be sure, though, and this is important, so listen up. Be sure not to train him dry, okay? Might be hard to resist, but don't kill him. Uh, all right. Uh, this is your blood pool. Blood is the fuel for your vampiric powers or disciplines. When your blood pool is low, you need to refill it. Humans are an abundant source of blood in most areas of the game. One is in the alley around the corner. Let's zoom out here a little bit. <clears throat> Feeding on humans fills your blood pool. To feed, approach your victim and press the feed key when you are close. It's important that humans do not see you feed on other humans. Or at all, really. Once you've begun feeding on your victim, you will see this bar appear. This bar represents your victim's blood pool. Should you stop feeding before you're emptying his blood pool and killing him? Oh, you should stop feeding. Alright, uh, so I'm to sneak up on him. He doesn't seem particularly worried. Kind of oblivious there. Maybe maybe living in denial. Just gonna walk away from me, punk. That's how it's gonna be. Alright. Denying reality will not save you. dark power great when do I get my cape do I get to pick a color all right now you got the blood you're feeling all kick-ass feeling better than your best day living but wait it gets better all kindred kindred that's a our word for vampire that all seems kind of pretentious but few fine. things in common things that set them right square above humans on the food chain uh, such as like sharper senses a body that can take a beating and if you play your cards right, eternal life. That's no sure bet, but still, a chance at immortality is not a bad deal. And that's just for starters. French benefits for joining the club. Um, does it come with dental? Because I, my mouth's kind of a mess right now. Uh. Well, you can still be destroyed, but forget the books and the movies. Garlic, it's worthless. A cross, pfft, shove it right up their ass. <laughs> the steak? Only if it catches you in the heart, and then it just paralyzes you. Running water? Eh, that's no problem. I bathe. I get the now, feeling that's not going to be a problem for me. To the head. Oh, that's trouble, boy. Fire? That's real trouble. Sunlight? Well, you catch a sunrise and it's all over, kiddo. Get it? Fire bad. Got it. Okay, now. What the fuck is this? Sounds like an explosion, Jack. Look, you get inside here and head upstairs. Uh, you do that. I'm just gonna sit here and crouch ominously at this. Oh, here we go. Press the jump key. Jump. World's sturdiest crates. There we go. What do we got here? Your feats and the co are the combination of your various abilities and attributes. The higher your feet score, the better you are at the activities they influence. Inspection is a feat. It is the combination of perception and investigation. It allows you to see hidden and secret things. For example, the lockpicks on the crate in front of you. You can find your feats listed on the right-hand side of your character sheet. You can pick up certain objects, yada yada, yada pick things up. I'll take those. Those are probably going to be very useful in my new Come career. down here. Stay away from the window. Why are we whispering? Oh, it's a spot raid. The bot. They're, uh, uh, Christ, I was hoping to spare this shit till later. Uh, the Sabat. No. Uh, 
They're mostly mindless, bloodthirsty assholes. That's all you need to know for now, all right? Kind of gave up on that whispering thing pretty quick, didn't we? Uh, so what's up? The Sabbat got wind of the gathering here, so they figured they'd raise a little hell with a little heat on the new prince. What's the prince a prince of? No time for political rundown. Job one, get out of here alive. Spot might be mindless, but they hit like a Mack truck, like raging savages. Nothing a fledgling like you want to do. I can handle myself just fine. Uh, what am I supposed to do then? Shh, shh. Heads up. Back away. Yeah, those gun flashes look pretty good for this uh, mod. Don't think I'm very good at this whole stealth thing. Dumb frenzied sabot bastards. All right, we gotta have a moose out the back quick. I'll stay and keep a watch out. You get us into the office. The door's around the corner here. I'm on it. Access your quest log. Right, what's the quest log say? A vicious vampire faction known as the Sabbat has launched an assault on the secret Camarilla gathering downtown. You and Jack are caught in the middle. To escape, you must obtain entry into the office. And when the door is locked, you will see the use icon. Lockpicking, a combination of dexterity and security, is a feat that helps you open locked doors with a lockpick. All right. Uh, once you get done lockpicking, you'll see this bar represents the time you needed to pick the lock. If the value of your lockpicking feat is equal to or greater than the difficulty of the lock, you will be able to pick it. Seems simple enough. And no lockpicking minigame. Just pure stat base. That, uh, what? Jack, what the heck? Ah, uh, shortcut. Well, nicely done, though. Not exactly an angel in life, were you? No, I am a demon of destruction. Uh, I had my moments. Cool. Now, if you want a lesson on how really not to act, take notes for those sabbat assholes. You're a big bad vampire. Yeah, great. Congrats. Now keep it to yourself. You go roar and you beat your chest, and that's what you can expect. So you're saying I'm shooting some more of like a Friday the Thirteenth thing, just kind of sneak around and shank people in the dark? I can do that. Wait, but I've still got that list of people from high school. Why can't I? It's the same reason you don't let humans see you feeding. It's why the wolf doesn't want the sheep to know he's there. It's also why you don't go juggling dumpsters or outrun the 815 from Sacramento. Wait, I can do that? And it's why you didn't know any of this when you woke up this morning. Fair enough. Keep our secret secret and you make things easier on all of us. We're living in the age of cell phone cameras. Fuck-ups ain't tolerated. Makes sense enough, right? Well, it ain't a casual thing for a legend like you. What do you mean? What could happen? That party back there with the guy in the suit and the Magilla Gorilla? The assholes that put your sire to death? That's the Camarilla. They make a tidy business out of enforcing vampire laws like this one. What, do they rifle through their pockets or what? All right, so the Camarilla are like the vampire good guys? Mm, yeah, I'll tell you what I think some other time maybe. I like to let people form their own opinions. Noted. All right, what's next? And you, my fugly friend, are gonna have it extra hard. A little effort and the rest of us can blend in okay. The sighting of your hideous ass hits the internet and it's all over. There's a reason most Nosferatu smell like the sewer. Figure it out. Uh, okay, that seems pretty clear. All right, now don't worry, because I know the area a little. And you know what? I'm glad we're in this situation, you and I. It illustrates a point. You gotta utilize your surroundings. Uh, I like MacGyver. Uh, what does that mean exactly? You do what you gotta do. Theft, destruction of property, breaking and entering. <laughs> These will be the least of your sins before the night's out. My sins are so many. look around here. You gotta get out the back there through that magnetically sealed door. There must be a key someplace. I will find the key. Uh, area indicator. The icon to the left indicates that you are in a combat zone. In combat, anything goes. Uh, masquerade. Respect the masquerade. Elysium, Vampire, Neutral Ground. No combat or disciplines allowed except blood buff while lockpicking. Alright. In masquerade areas, breaking the masquerade can carry dire consequences, such as unwanted attention of vampire hunters. 
After five masquerade violations, your game is over. As a Nosferatu, you will have to be extremely careful about hiding your monstrous nature. If you are in danger of being seen, you will see this icon appear in the upper right corner of the screen. A small arrow will tell you from what direction you may be seen. The current, your current number of masquerade violations is displayed in the upper right corner of your character sheet. Alrighty, let's see. Keys, keys, keys. Where do we have keys? Uh, looks like a... Yep, oh, oh. You can read the note. Yeah, you can yada, yada. Password. Password is right next to your computer. Alright, that seems like a pretty smart move. Alright, save. Uh, chop, shop. Unlock that safe there. Alright, and yes, containers have things that you can get out of them. Yeah, take the key. There we go. Now take that key card and head out the back. I'll meet you out in the alley there. I'm gonna check out things from topside. Got it. Press the inventory key to access your inventory. Da -da 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 -da. All right, let's get out of here. Seem to have run out of bullets there, sir. Oh, okay. Let's not piss off Jack. Uh, you've been wounded by the Zabat. This blue bar represents the current level of your health. As you sustain regular damage, it will turn black. If your health is completely depleted, you suffer final death, and your game is over. Your health regenerates over time. Uh, when you are feeding, your health regenerates much faster. If your health bar turns yellow, it means you have sustained aggravated damage. Certain hazards, like fire and supernatural attacks, cause aggravated damage. This takes much longer to heal than regular damage. I don't know about you, but taking any damage kind of makes me aggravated. What's up, Jack? Fucking waste of unlife, these Sabat Vatos. You get winged? Hey, hey! Look at them potholes! Those will close up soon enough. Better feed, though. <laughs> There's someone down the stairs here. It's not the freshest catch, but he'll do. What's the difference? Blood's blood, right? Well, when it comes to feeding, it's quality blood you're looking for, not the quantity. Bums and lowlife don't pack the same punch that a healthy, well-bred human will. Juice bags with a pedigree. That's the good stuff. But you gotta take what you can get. You ever had a PhD, kid? Ooh, that's good stuff. I will take your word for it. Remember what I said, though. Don't <coughs> kill them. At least not the innocent ones. You're a monster now. Make no mistake. One of the damned and the fallen. You need to hold on to every last shred of humanity you have. Uh -huh, but I want to be a terrible monster. Uh, let's say I get a little overzealous. What happens then? An innocent's an innocent. You kill one, even a worthless bum, even by accident, and it's going to cost you a piece of your own humanity. Bring you closer to that beast you got welling up inside you. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Uh, the beast, what exactly does this mean? The beast? It's always there waiting to take over. When it does, it's like a wild animal wearing your skin. Desperate, scared, reckless. He'll do anything to survive, and it's you that has to deal with the consequences. Well, so I can't kill anyone? Seems, uh, kind of restricting. I, I, I said innocent humans. If some asshole levels a 12-gauge your way, you drain him, skin him, and bash in his skull. Self-preservation is a vital part of humanity, after all. My favorite part, in fact. <laughs> I think I can follow that, and I agree wholeheartedly. The only way to fight the beast is to keep in touch with your humanity, and don't go hungry. It's a fine line. I got it. All right, now go feed. Careful, though. He's gonna drain fast. Be right back. Have to get my munch on. Yeah, remember, you want to avoid draining your victims. Yeah, yeah. Another person who doesn't seem terribly. Did you just call me crab nipple? No, no, crab nipple. Listen, we got crab nipple. Oh, we got a crab nipple. I do not have crab nipples. You, you take that back. Ah, oh. oh, did you? Did you wipe your butt with that scarf? <laughs> Not quite as good, huh? Nah, you can do worse. There's some rats down the way. You think I'm kidding? You can survive feeding on animals if you can 
stomach that kind of thing. Ah, oh, worse than the bum's neck. That scarf tasted like old gym socks. Well, give it a try. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Nosferatu share a certain kinship with vermin. Rats do not flee the Nosferatu's approach. Unlike other vampire clans who only gain one blood point from feeding on rats, Nosferatu's gain three. Killing rats has no impact on your humanity score. Well, that's awfully convenient. Come here, rat. Mm, that's a good rat burger. I ate the rat, Jack. Boy, you took right to that, huh? I guess for a nos, rat eating is natural as eczema. I feel like you're kind of stereotyping me. Uh, yeah, keep on laughing. Keep it down. Got someone around the way here. Uh, just one guy? Not too much of a threat by himself, but you never know if there's more in shouting range. You're gonna have to sneak past. Sneak where exactly? The building across from us with the garage door. There's some double doors on the far side. I'll meet you inside. Just stay low and stick to the shadows. And don't let him see you. I will do my best to see you in a minute. Alright, go. Gone. Sneaking, a combination of dexterity and stealth, is a feat that allows you to move among your victim's enemies without being detected. You must be crouched to sneak. Uh, the meter to the left indicates the proximity of your enemies and their chances of detecting you if they look your way. Green means you're completely safe, yellow means they might you might be seen, and red means they will see you if they look in your direction. An enemy's chance of detecting you is directly tied to your sneaking feet. If you are detected, your enemies will often say as much and come investigate. Well, that's awfully helpful of them. <clears throat> Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Oh yes, this game has just the most amazing crouch walk animation. Real quality content right there. <laughs> Duck walk my way over here to these crates. And oh, explosion. What's he doing? Do it back that way. Go, go, go. I'm a ninja. I'm a ninja. Think invisible thoughts. Quiet, they're inside here. Seems that shovel head outside just got separated from his pack. He's wounded too. Go take care of him. Don't worry, he's probably greener than you. Uh, that makes him pretty green. The Sabbat, you see, they don't have the most rigorous training program. In fact, that poor sod is lucky if he knows he's a vampire. You'd think the whole pointy teeth would give it away, but, uh, yeah, how could that be? He's probably just turned and beaten over the head. They like to do that. Make shock troops, cannon fodder, put him out of his misery. Sounds good. I have a little frustration I need to work out. He is a vampire, so be ready. Oh my. I was born ready. Go get him. I'm gonna get him all. Just wait and see how much getting he gets. Uh, your unarmed combat feed is a combination of strength and brawl. It directly affects your success in unarmed combat. There are different attacks depending on what direction you are moving when you initiate the attack. Try different combinations of moving and attacking in the upcoming battle. Pl press block button. What do we got here? So we got, oh, we got some, some martial arts going on here. Some lunging punch. And, oh, yeah, there's me lunge. All right. Let's go get him. Hey, you. Let's go. Yeah, right in my face. That's not very nice. Yeah, how do you like that? Yeah, yeah, you just got wrecked, son. Taking your tire iron. You just pick up a tire iron. Kind of figured that. The icon indicates the weapon that you have currently equipped. Yada, yada, yada. Kick his ass, Jack. That's that. Sounds like you got another pack moving in, though. The Savannah going all out. You better head underground and avoid straight bullets. That sounds like a plan. All right, head down into the basement through the grate in there. Keep that tire iron handy. I'll be there in a minute. I'm sure you will. Oh, I'm done. Hello. Stop. Uh, combat is not the only solution for sticky situations. You can also use your feats and disciplines in dialogue. When you're able to do this, your responses will show up in different colors. When using higher resolutions, you gotta. Oh. Blue indicates a persuasion line, and green indicates an intimidation line. You! Just stay back. Keep your distance. Or what? What are you gonna do about it? Kinda like right up your face already. Now who the hell are you? Are you involved in all this? Because I'm gonna raise this in and SWAT will be all the uh, I kinda prefer you not. Uh 
Maybe I am, and maybe my fun isn't over just yet. <laughs> Look, I'm making eight fifty an hour watching car parts collect dust. Uh, that, I'm that's not about to take a bullet for this job. Completely understandable. Uh, if you'll just show me the way out, then. Yeah. Okay. All right. This way. This will lead us up to the warehouse. We can maybe sneak out that way. That sounds good. Why don't you, uh, why don't you lead the way there? Oh, that didn't work out terribly well for you. That, that's what minions are for. <laughs> now then, let's be a little bit more. Oh, when you position to perform a stealth kill, you will see this icon. Stealth kills have the advantage of being silent. Quit me fists. Let's see what you got. I'm stealthy like ninja. Oh yeah. Oh, not sure what's going on. Sounds like the Sabbat's getting scattered. Well, sneak up on me, Jack. I'm gonna keep an ear to the ground. Be careful going forward here. Could be a whole mess of them hold up. Uh, the more the merrier. Uh, disciplines are your vampiric powers and cost a certain amount of blood from your blood pool to activate. An innate ability common to all vampires is blood heal, which heals you. This icon indicates the power you currently have selected. There are two kinds of disciplines, passive that directly affect you, and targeted that affect your enemies. Blood buff is another common ability common to all vampires. Scroll the mouse wheel to select blood buff, use power key to use it. Temporary bonus to all your physical attributes. It is useful in a variety of situations, like picking a lock that would otherwise be too difficult. Alright, let's see. I'm pretty sure I can get this lock without blood buff. <clears throat> yes, you can. What do we got here? Uh, Nosferatu have three unique disciplines. Animalism, supernatural control of nature, obfuscate, vampiric invisibility, and potence, colossal vampiric strength. Potence is vampire super strength. Potence is a passive or time-based discipline. Once you activate it, pay attention to discipline timer. It is not a masquerade violation. <laughs> There's a Sabat guard up ahead. Use potence to kill him. All right. There's potence. Let's get him. Holy crap. Yeah, that definitely uh, ended him nice and quick. Ah, got you this time. I think they're clearing out. There's no need to go stirring up the hornet's nest till we know the score, though. Head through here. We'll come to an elevator around the way. I will meet you over there. Meet you there. Don't let him catch you. If I'm not there in ten minutes, call the president. Obfuscate is the power of vampiric invisibility. You must be out of sight when you activate this discipline. With level 2, you have to stay crouched to stay invisible. Uh, guard up ahead, use obfuscate to sneak past. Sneak our way through here. Animalism is the mystical vampiric power that controls nature. Animalism is a targeted discipline. The effect and its length varies at each level. Use of animalism is a, is a masquerade violation if you are seen activating it. <coughs> Excuse me. There's a guard up ahead. Use animalism to incapacitate him and pass by. You have level 1 animalism known as Night Wisp Ravens. The guard will be distracted by a flock of mystical ravens. You can then walk past him to the nearest room. You could just like sneak right past him, but whatever. Peck his eyes out. Uh, you can pick up an object and throw it when you see this icon. Throwing objects make noise and can be used to distract your enemies. There's a bot vampire up ahead guarding the exit. Crouch and find an object that you can pick up and throw it away from the guard to distract him. Oh. Yes. Mysterious ah, case of the flying ah, sand can. Fucking humans. Gangbangers protecting their turf. Oh, man. I'm here thinking it's Sabat moving up in here. It's the fucking locals are about to take one for the hood. Ah, uh, so what do we do about that? Yeah, they probably seen too much. Here, take this 38. Fucking pea shooter, but a few shots and it'll take down a human. Uh, thank you. 
Well, I'm gonna want it back, so don't go die and lose it. All right, all right. I don't use guns much. They're noisy, they're clumsy, practically useless against vampires, but still, a kindred's gotta keep up with the times. And in modern day Los Angeles, that means coming strapped. They're really selling it to me. What do you mean useless against vampires? Well, yeah, you know, some are more lethal than others, of course. Watch out for those shotguns. Ouch, those things can smart, I tell you. I hear you. Head up and clear out what's left of them. Can't have them running their mouths about any of this. I'm gonna make sure there's no stragglers around outside. Alrighty. Uh, given a 38 revolver. Yada yada. Range combat is a combination of perception and firearms. It affects how well you shoot a gun. When you equip a gun, you will see the ranged combat cursor. It's spread and the speed at which it focuses is a direct result of the value of your ranged combat feet. Some bottles on the crate at the end of the hole. Shoot the bottles. All right. Oop. Let's uh, try. See if this helps a little bit. Much better. There we go. Ground floor, coats, hats, gangbanger assholes. Have some ravens. Where are you going? Hey, get back here. How about? He's trying to feed on you, punk. Take your bat. What did you have? Some more ammo? That's it, kiddo. Just like that, and it's all over. Everyone slinks back to their corners of the city for the night. Well, that's it? That wasn't too hard. Until the next night, when the Camarilla finds some way to strike back. Parry, dodge, spin, and all that. And so on, and so on, and so on. Uh, so this is normal? Well, to be honest, it came at a... Well, an interesting time, let's say. The Camarilla, the Sabat. Now, in L.A., these are the new kids on the block. There's already plenty of kindred had stakes down in California long before them. Now, we got every ancient kindred rivalry playing out all over the city. A lot of tension out there. A lot of fear. A lot of jittery, high-strung predators clinging to their little pieces of eternity. Uh, that sounds fascinating, but you're losing me. Oh, boy. Oh, I think they're looking for you outside. Guess you've got a cab to catch. Wait, how is that going to work? I'm fill you in on a little bit more, but... Ah, hell, we'll figure it all out. Sure, I'm keeping the gun, by the way. If you make it back, stop in at the last round. It's a bar downtown here. I'll fill you in on the politics. <laughs> That's the stuff that'll kill you. <laughs> Take that as a yes. Good luck. I will see you there after I got a good day's sleep. Ha! Ha! Get it? Good day's sleep? Because normally people say good, good night's sleep. Yeah, and good day. I'll, I'll just see it myself out. You received two experience points. Hooray! Alrighty, and that's the end of the tutorial. We're now at our, our haven. So I'm going to end the first episode here. Uh, thanks for watching, if you've managed to stick the way through this far. Uh, leave any comments in the uh, section below. Uh, tell me how you think about the video, any way you think it can improve. And I will see you next time. Goodbye.